Start going. Okay, so yeah, I was doing a live stream, and it was like the third time I've gone live using a uh, software. And uh, it was so funny because I, I was like, shoot, I think I'm, I'm like, am I live live? Am I am I live live? And people were like, oh, my God, you did not go live live. And I was like, I said it. I I said it. So I've gone live like one other time. And I was like, OK, I know I'm live live. now. <laughs> <laughs> That's the beauty of like doing something like this is like you ha- you kind of have that freedom to just like you don't have to have like a perf- like professional introduction. Yeah. You can kind of just go into it. And yeah. people will forgive you, especially if they like your channel and they like your yes. content. Yes. Well, I don't know if people are so sort of forgiving as I'm incredibly dorky and apparently extremely <laughs> entertaining. I think I'm like the most boring person on the planet. I, yeah, I think I'm pretty boring, but apparently I'm really entertaining. So, Well, that's good, especially when you have an audience, right? Like yes. You, you have a I YouTube feel channel. Sorry. I want to apologize to them. Like every time I'm like, I am so sorry you were forced to listen to my voice. <laughs> I hate my voice. Uh, I'm, I'm very disparaging about myself, but you know. Yeah, I think any any self like anybody who like cares about the content that they're putting out or cares about what what people actually think of them and the mm-hmm. like the quality of it, they're going to be self analyzing like that. Yeah. They're going to be critical of themselves. I have been like my whole life. Like it's so, not a good quality, right? It's is it a good quality? Would I, you say it's a good quality? I don't know. Like I think everybody. So when you hear your own voice, it's different. Yeah. When you hear it recorded, because there's. So I went to school for human anatomy, started off at 18 as an EMT, went up from there in medicine. So anatomy is my passion, but your eardrums are attached to little tiny bones that vibrate. So what you're hearing is the vibrations inside your head, not what's coming out of your mouth. So it sounds very different. Right. So that most people, sense. most people hate the way their voice sounds. I definitely hate the way my voice sounds. I hate the way mine sounds too. Yeah. <clears throat> I don't, I don't know one person that likes it. Your voice? No, no, no. Their oh, voice. Yeah, no, I don't think anybody does. I know, yeah. like, I've watched so many interviews with, like, recording artists, and they're all like, oh, I hate the way my voice sounds. And people are like, you have a great voice. And I'm like, <laughs> have you ever recorded yourself and listened to yourself sing? Because you're going to hate it. <laughs> it's, just, it's just how it is. Because <laughs> it does. It does sound completely different. Yeah, absolutely. Now, how did you get into, we should probably mention, we've been yes. talking about content creation. You <laughs> yes. have your own YouTube channel. I do. What do you, what kind of things do you cover and how did you get into it? So my first, first video, I think is me making a white bread recipe back in 2020. Wow. Like I was making it and I know it was like, no one could find bread. So I did it. I made a couple of loaves and I was like, this is really easy. So I recorded it and kind of pieced it all together and posted it. And then my second video was, I, we were in the UP uh, visiting family August of 2020 and we were at a waterfall and I recorded it and I just did it a loop trying to make like, a because I like the sound of moving water to sleep. So <laughs> that's, that's all it was until 2021. So when you posted those two videos, what were the views? What were the reactions like? I think my bread video now has 20 something views. Oh, wow. <laughs> and, then, and then the waterfall one's like 13 mm. like no no views i've had literally one person comment since my wow. channel started about the bread one wow and so since 2020 how many videos have you put out i'm i think over 150 wow yeah that's consist consistency right there sort of <laughs> sort of <laughs> so i'm a part of what is called law tube which is a lot of lawyers that um, as I was explaining before, what happened in the pandemics, everything shut down. Well, the courts are free and open to the public to view so you can watch the process. That's one of our rights. So what the courts had to do when they were like, okay, we got to get back to doing this, they had to figure out how to work around COVID restrictions. And that was starting, they started having court on Zoom and then live streaming it on YouTube. So this wasn't something that was done prior to COVID. Um, there might have been a couple of places that that did, um, but no, it was not widespread. Like literally, every court did it. So, what is the purpose of live streaming it? Because courts are supposed to be open and to accessible the to the public. Oh, so you can watch right. what's going around, going on. You can, you know, because for the most part, you know, many judges are elected, so you're able to see, you know. That kind of stuff, I guess. Yeah. I don't know. 
I don't know. <laughs> so, so did you start doing this just for like sheer ent- entertainment? Like, what was the so? What was the motive behind this? I actually never wanted a YouTube channel. Really? Yeah, never ever wanted one. Was not my idea. I have a I, on Facebook or no on on YouTube because I'd search like court drama whatever you know like true crime. And I came across this channel out of Nevada that uploaded a bunch of family court cases. And this whole situation is very, it's been very taxing, um, this, how it started. So I posted, I was watching this one family court case and I posted on Facebook, like, hey, there's this case. You guys are like, you like, like this case is really weird and interesting. And I had someone that I was friends with on Facebook go, oh, there's this Facebook group. They're talking about it. And it was a Facebook group out of the state, um, their court watchers page. And I literally like sat and watched the group for a couple of weeks because I was like, I don't really want to join a group, you know. (laughs) But then they started talking about stuff. And I had questions about different aspects of like, why why would the judge do this or what, you know, because I don't know the laws in that state. Right. And so I ended up joining the group to interact and discuss, and kind of that's how it started. There is a um, there's a guy in the group, and he has his own, I don't know, it's a YouTube channel. It's Our Nevada Judges. Um, and he, like, I so I've been interacting with him. I, I love him. Alex is the guy that runs that, and he was like, you need to do that for Michigan. And I'm all like, no. <laughs> I literally, like, for a year, I was like, not even. And I don't want to do anything like that. I don't have any desire to have a channel. <laughs> like, I don't want to be out. Like, I, that's just not my thing. I just like watching it. You know, like, I enjoy it. Right. Um, ever since I was little, like, I l- have been trying to figure out why people are the way they are. Mm. Uh, started off in sixth grade. I checked out a uh, memoir of a an extremely evil person knowing he was an extremely evil person and literally was the reason for millions of deaths. Hitler? Yep. Sixth grade. Checked out Mein Kampf from the school library. Caused a little bit of a hubbub and I'm all like, well, I know he's a bad person. I want to know why. Like, can I, why did, why was he that way? Because you know he wasn't that way like his whole life. Right. So it was like. So was what did it, you, what did you find? He was, honestly, he had mental illness. I really, truly think he had some some severe mental illness. And I think him being put in prison kind of pushed him over the edge. But there was also, in Europe, this overwhelming theme of Jews are bad. And so it was kind of like he... He latched onto it. He latched something. onto it and went with it. Because yeah. he wanted to be somebody. Right. And it was like that that like desire to be known to be someone you wanted to be important i guess it's like a cult it's like being a cult leader yeah essentially yeah yeah not a good guy yeah no i would i would think many people would say he wasn't a good guy (laughs) (laughs) true but yeah so that caused a little bit of a hubbub and i'm all like i just want to know why he was the way he was and right you know and i was like if, if i Shouldn't be checking it out. Why is it at the school library? This is in the library. So they got school. mad at you for checking it out? They were concerned. They were like, what's wrong with this girl? <laughs> yeah. Well, and my maiden name is very Polish. Um, so I don't know what they thought. And uh, come to find out, my last name literally means son of the nation, which like the National Bank has my last name on it or my maiden name on it. <laughs> yeah. There is a newspaper. I knew about the newspaper. There is a resistance newspaper. Uh, um had our last name on it. And wow. so we're like kind of the last. Uh, my dad, when he dies, is the last meal with that last name. But there's been a surge of neo-Nazi skinheads, nationalists in Poland, that have started changing their last name to my maiden name. Wow. I'm not a fan of that. Yeah. Because that's totally not us. Right. It's like, leave my fucking name out your mouth. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's like, that is so not who we are. Yeah, that's unfortunate. Yeah. So, so having this this channel, this um, court channel. Yeah. Would you say it's you do it because you want to try to understand 
the people in our in in Michigan or like what um, is what is the purpose of doing it? Well, I already watched court cases. Yeah. So like I was watching, I found a couple of different channels and I was working um part-time. It was great. I'm 100% disabled. I was able to work when I was able. I had the ability to like literally lay down on the floor while I was working like by shredding paper, you know. Wow. So it was, it was really accommodating. It was wonderful. But I also have ADHD, so I have to have something, either TV or whatever. And then I had found these channels. There's a couple channels on YouTube that did court cases day in, day out. And they they would live stream other courts or whatever. And that's kind of how it got started. And I started finding judges here in Michigan that I didn't know about. And I would send a message to this one creator. I'm like, hey, there's this case in Judge Simpson's courtroom, which is Cedric Simpson out of Washtenaw County. And I was like, it's at this time, it's great. You're going to love it. And I did, I don't know how many times I did that. And then he was like, okay, record it, upload it, unlisted, and then send me the link. (laughs) And I was like, no, I don't, I don't want to show. He's like, oh, you don't have to have it listed. Well, then after a week or so, he was like, just do your own channel. I was like, (laughs) I don't really want to, but I started I didn't start even like with my face on screen. My voice wasn't even on it. It was just, I was typing comments as it was like, as I'm watching it, I'm typing literally what I'm thinking, a running wow. commentary of my brain. So that's what you do whenever um, you're covering a case <clears throat> or whenever you're live streaming this case, you, you kind of share it, right? How do, how do you, do, you don't share it live, right? I do occasionally do okay. live streams, but I do not live stream a court live stream. Okay. Because this is where I'm different from some of the other law tubers. I will never release information, personal information. I will never release a victim's name, nor or the identifying information. I will protect all children, unless it's like a 17-year-old that's actually in court. You know, um, I am more journalistic in that fashion. Okay. So... I don't like to live stream because the, they do say addresses or phone numbers and emails. So how do you how do you bleep that out? Do you just bleep it out? Yeah, I had my editing software. Okay. I like well, it takes a ten minute video can take up to two hours. To, I believe it. To edit it's, <laughs> it's a lot of work that goes into it. It's a little crazy, but I wouldn't want anyone to put that my information out there. Yeah. Um. I don't think it's right. And people are, oh, the courts, they leave it up or they they do it. Yeah, but the courts also don't leave the videos up. Some of them will leave them up for a little bit. A lot of them will pull them down within a week. Really? Yeah. Um, so it's I it's almost like my responsibility to protect that information. Right. I think. Right. Especially if you're putting it out there for the rest of time. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and that's that's the thing is I don't plan on pulling the videos down. You know, unless I have like a victim's family come to me and see like, hey, can you please remove this? This is really, you know, that I can understand. And I have absolutely I would do that every single time. So when you're when you're covering a story, do you just kind of do it on the fly? Do you study the do you study it before you cover it? (laughs) What is the process? So I watch I don't know how many hours of court day in, day out. And a lot of times, and this is where ADHD is amazing, because I'll have like four different devices playing YouTube, and then I will like, I have, so I have my current iPhone, I had to get a new iPad, or I had to get an iPad, and then I have my old iPhone that I'll record on. So I'll start hearing something that sounds interesting, and so then I automatically go jump to record that hearing and I do have to watch certain courts because they will, as soon as it's done being live streamed, it's done. Like you uh, don't get, to, they, they don't leave it up at all. So I have to be, pay more attention to those cases, those courts. Right. Um, but yeah, I mean, I don't really, like I kind of hear what's going on and that's about it. I don't necessarily really watch it. So like kind of the reactions that you're getting that you're seeing on the screen. They're from legit me, reactions. They're, yeah, they are. Or if I've, <laughs> if I've actually listened to part of it, it's still what I immediately thought. Because, <laughs> that wow. makes it as authentic as possible. Yeah. Um, what is the worst case that you've, you've shared? Well, um, that I've actually shared at this point or that you've covered. 
So there is a case out of St. Joseph County. Um, it was in front of Judge Middleton, and it is a severe child abuse case. Mm. Um, eight, eight or nine month old baby. Oh, geez. They don't know how he was alive. Like, the pediatric child abuse specialists were shocked that he so far doesn't really have any cognitive difficulties. Wow. Yeah. It was bad. And, like, mom's boyfriend had just been released from MDOC, like, two months before. Whoa. Yeah. And those cases hit hard for me. Um, There's another one. It's Elisa Williams back in, I think it was 81. Um, Her not biological father, but her legal father, uh, had taken her from their home in Ohio, and he came up here with her, and she's never been seen again. Whoa. And a couple of years ago, he was arrested. He's pulled off a CTA bus in Chicago, and he's not mentally well, and he swears up and down that he was kidnapped. <laughs> like, it's crazy. Whoa. So, but, like, when I, when I watched, what caught me was the fact that he was like, I was kidnapped, blah, 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 you know, and I'm like, what? Okay, I need to listen to this because, you know, that's going to be entertaining. Right. You know, but also kind of interesting, kind of like, why is this guy thinking he was kidnapped off the bus? <laughs> and when I started, like, the other thing that caught my attention is that it was a state attorney general's office was there. So I was like, oh, that's something big. Because people don't realize the state attorney general doesn't necessarily get involved in actually prosecuting cases. It's got to be pretty big. Right. So I was, that one was more like, Oh, and then I recorded it. Didn't think anything of it. He was back in front of the judge a couple of days later. I recorded that. One of the other things I try to, I'll record case. I'll sit on it so I can have more than just a two minute little clip so that I can cover the case more in depth. And I will follow every case that I can as far as I'm able which right now does not include going to actual courtrooms and recording. <laughs> Are you allowed to do that? Yeah. Yeah. It's media. You can have cameras and everything? Yeah, I'm media. Wow. Oh, I didn't know that. Yep. Hmm. I am apparently an investigative journalist. Interesting. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Make me, me sound fancy for being a nerd. <laughs> you don't think you would ever do that? Oh, no, I would. If you I had would? equipment. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. Now. I yeah. wouldn't have before. That was not my plan, but I'd do it now. So how would you, if you were to do that, how would you do that? Would you go there, record it, and then? Well, I'd have to first file a motion with the court. Okay. For media access. Oh, uh, okay. So, yeah. And that, that my friend Alex can help me out with because he has to do that with all of his cases. You have to do that per case. Yeah. Wow. Technically, recording court cases that are on YouTube is not legal. Really? Yeah. I don't know why it was a it's a Supreme Court court rule. They said like I'm not sure why they said it, but so far judges haven't been <laughs> <laughs> enforcing that one. <laughs> I'm probably gonna now be on a list of people yeah. that go after. Don't go after me. I don't have any money. They're flagging your YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> There's worse. There are definitely worse ones out there than mine. How many of these channels are in Michigan? Is there um, any other than yours? I don't. I don't think so. Really? Yeah, I don't. Wow. So you're there might something. be there might be, and I just don't know about it. I because I spend so much time watching YouTube. Like if I'm not watching court cases, I'm literally not on YouTube. It's very <laughs> rare that I'm on YouTube anymore. Which. I should be out there supporting like fellow creators, but it's like at the end of the day, I just don't want to. I don't want to listen to it anymore. No, you shouldn't. And like like if, uh, you should do what you want to do yeah. and and listen to what you want to listen to. Yeah, which still includes serial killer, <laughs> but it helps you with your craft, I'm sure. Yes. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> Wait, when you said craft, I was like, it does not help me with spinning yarn or knitting, but okay, <laughs> yes, it does. <laughs> um, sure. I mean, I did that all beforehand. That's why like, when I first saw that meme about women that fall asleep listening to serial killer, I was like, <laughs> yep. And my husband's like, oh, they're talking about you. <laughs> do you listen to Jen Carpenter's podcast at all? I don't think so. No. Do you know who she is? Mm -mm. How do you not know who she is? She does the uh, 
So Dead podcast, I believe. Mm, no, I think I have listened to her. Uh, let me pull it up. I might have. So I, um, in 2006, was hit head-on by a drunk driver and have a brain injury from it. Okay. So, like, I have memory issues, which makes it even more fun. <laughs> what was the extent of the damage other than the brain injuries? Um, Did you get, a, like, a concussion? So we don't, yeah, it was some sort of a concussion. Um, my left frontal lobe has atrophied to about half the size. Whoa. And my pituitary gland is gone. Whoa. Yeah. Which we didn't know. I gained 100 pounds in like three or four months because of it. Wow. Well, years after my accident, and I broke most of my spine. Oh, my like, gosh. What off. kind of car accident was it? Uh, we were in an old Achieva, and they were in a full-size like F-250. They rear-ended? Mm-mm. She turned. She had a red light and turned in front of us and hit. I was in the passenger seat. She hit the front, like, passenger side front, and, like, there's, like, that much space between my knees and the bumper. Holy cow. I went up over the airbag, smashed. I still have a little, I don't know if you can see it. Uh, I think a so. A little flat. Oh, yeah. Yep. yep. That's from smashing my head into the windshield. Oh, my gosh. So, had a quick. Working in medicine because of it. I tried to go back to work, and I think I made it like three or four weeks. And I was like, I got, I can't, I couldn't, I couldn't remember what I had just seen a patient for. Nothing. I was like, Oh my gosh! And what I, were you? You were a nurse? No, I was were EMS. You? EM. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, I would <laughs> drive the thirty minutes to work and have to go into an exam room and sleep for like an hour because that drive was so exhausting. Whoa. Mm -hmm. It was bad. Yep. Wow. That's scary. And the hospital had actually uh, released me that same night from the hospital. Said, you should tore some ligaments. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Yep. Did you go back? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> I've been back to the hospital since. They've tried to kill me many more times. <laughs> <laughs> so... I, that's like sort of my ongoing joke is like when I was 16 is the first time I remember doctors saying, hey, you're not going to survive. Because I have like very complicated health history. Mm. And <laughs> so it's like, well, I live there like at 30. They were like, we're just not going to say this anymore because you're still going. I'm almost 42. <laughs> and everyone's like, you're crazy. I'm like, well, I was already supposed to be dead multiple times. So why not do what I want to do? Yeah, that's why not? Sort of. That's what I, I started doing that. Like, oh. Well, I'm young, but I still want to do this before I die. So we're doing this. And you just don't waste any time. Mm -mm. Just get to it. Yeah. Now, except for now, I'm almost 42 and I'm like, now what do I do? <laughs> Set new goals. <laughs> like, well, it's like I've done what I really wanted to do. Like, you know, whitewater rafting, hike a mountain, that kind of stuff. Like, I already did it. So now what do I do? Do it again. <laughs> that, was, <laughs> that was my body and health. I just had my lumbar spine fused in August, actually. Oh, so, yeah. So I am dealing with all that fun stuff. It, it makes me very complicated and complex and weird. <laughs> so this is the So Dead podcast. Oh, yeah. So she covers a lot of... Uh, Michigan cases. Yeah, Michigan cases. I'm pretty sure I have, actually. I mean, it's like Lansing's number one podcast. Yeah. She she has a bookstore, um, I think in Rio Town. Okay. It doesn't list it, but it might have gone down during the pandemic. But yeah, uh, she was voted number one podcast in Lansing. Just seen that the other day. One or two ends. What's that? I was looking up her name. <laughs> oh, uh, one or uh, two ends. Okay. How come I? Oh, I don't have the signal down here. Yeah, she does a really good job at covering uh, yeah. different crime stories and telling telling the victim stories. Um, she just recently covered uh, Shirley Michener's uh, son's death. Um, Shirley Michener, she's a lady locally who um, whose son was like murdered downtown Lansing. Uh, they're assuming one of his friends pushed him over. Like the oh recently yeah yeah a couple of years ago yeah I actually might have been like four or five years ago yeah but 
I suck at names, but if I see your face again, I'm going to be like, oh, yeah, hey, you're how are you? You're the podcast guy. Like, I don't know who you are, <laughs> but I know you. It happens to me all the time. So. I had a guy on the podcast a few weeks ago who um, had a stroke, and he's oh. like, I can't remember anything the next day. He's like, I won't remember that we had yeah. this conversation. And I was like, that's yeah, that happens that's wild. My, my husband's favorite story about like living with my memory issues is there was a movie I wanted to watch so bad. And it was, <laughs> it wasn't Jack Reacher. I don't know which one it was, but it was, I was like, let's, oh, it's out. Let's watch the movie. He's like, we've watched it. I'm like, no, no, we have not. I have not seen it. I would know. <laughs> it took 19 times of watching it. And then the last time I was like, I started watching it and I'm like, I think I've seen oh, wait, this. we've seen this. And he's like, that's what I've been saying. I'm like, dude, no, no, we didn't watch it together. And so he likes to remind me of that. Like, I don't, re- it's a good thing I'm a nerd and I like to learn because I get to relearn a lot of stuff. <laughs> so <laughs> that is hilarious. That, that's got to be frustrating too, though, right? It. I mean, you seem to yeah. embrace it pretty well. well what am, so, I mean, what else? Am are you I going to be do? a miserable cow? Right. Right. Like, I have complicated health stuff. If I'm in the ER, they're busy, right? Am I going to take it out on them? Why? It's not right. their fault. Right. You know, they're trying to do their job. They're trying to help me. Yeah. I can't take it out on anyone else. It's my thing. I mean, yeah, I do snap at people, but, like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. But as far as, like, letting your own physical conditions get you down, there's really nothing you can do about it. No. You know, just got to, you have to embrace it. I have to it. roll with it. Yeah. I mean, I get frustrated. I do. I That does happen. I do get depressed from it. You know, it's very frustrating when, like, I can't trust my own body a lot of times. And that sucks. Because, like, my body has failed me so many times. Mm-hmm. And it's hard because I've always been, like, a very physically active person. So, you know, like, when I couldn't even trust my body to hold up its own weight my husband there were times he'd have to literally like walk behind me hold me up kick my feet forward to get me into bed wow yeah so i have to give myself grace and i struggle with that a lot yeah do you still struggle with the uh, not having control of your body or no no not so much not since i had the fusion i've been getting more and more feeling back which is nice the first night of surgery I had it. They made me get up and go to the bathroom. I was in so much pain. Literally, I had like well below what would have been considered anything remotely close to being pain management at that point. <laughs> um, and that's something that we have an issue with U of M about because um, I was not given any pain medication for over eight hours. Wow. After having an extensive lumbar fusion that lasted like six or seven hours. What are they supposed to give you? Whatever I needed to take care of the pain. I was, Why wouldn't they? I don't know. I was in and out the whole night. Like I was, I remember have very distinct memories of my husband, like rubbing, like my arm, breathe, breathe. It's all right. It's okay. It's okay. Because it was so painful. You just Mm -hmm. kept checking out. Yeah. Wow. And the thing was, is like, they weren't going to give me anything by IV anymore, but then I was in a lot of pain, which is one of the things I have is complex pain syndrome. So my pain can be just out of control where it shouldn't be. I have no control over that. That's a neurological thing. I have a brain injury. It is what it is. Mm. Um, What was that called? Complex pain syndrome. It's sort of like a garbage dumpster term at this point. I want to look it up. Complex pain syndrome. The more known one is the complex regional pain syndrome, but it's more, for me, it's global. So it's not just necessarily one region. Right. I mean, it it would make sense that if you had a brain injury that your nerves wouldn't think wouldn't quite work properly. (laughs) You would think. I mean, I mean, I had my spine fused because of spinal cord damage. Mm, Yeah. I'm going to be in pain. That's an extremely painful surgery. So would it be kind of equivalent to like chronic pain? Yeah. It's like oh. chronic pain on steroids. Okay, let's see here. I don't even know what it officially says about it. <laughs> let's see. It might just call it chronic pain. Let's look at WebMD. Okay. See, yeah, it pulls up the regional pain syndrome, which is typically like if you've had it, like you'll have it when. In a certain area? Yeah. Okay. Let's read this. Um, 
Complex regional pain syndrome, CRPS, also called reflex sympathetic. Sympathetic. Sympathetic, sorry. Distro- Dystrophy syndrome. Just, you should just read this. Okay. Complex yeah. regional pain syndrome, CPRS, is also called reflex sympathetic dystrophy syndrome. It is a chronic pain condition in which high levels of nerve impulses are sent to an affected site. Experts believe that CR- CRPS happens because of dif- dysfunction and the central or peripheral nervous system. It is most common in people between ages 20 to 35. It's rare in children and seniors. It affects women more often than men. There is no cure. Wow. And this is where, like, it's, yeah. So it's, there's not really a cause. But for me, like, it won't necessarily just be, like, just my arm or leg. It can be, like, my entire lower right right and that i think stems more from the spinal cord injury he's like i've been diagnosed with a couple of different things that it's like what (laughs) what did what have they diagnosed you with you don't mind Um, asking uh, hold on so severe tbi is also associated with complex regional pain syndrome Mm -hmm. formerly called reflex sympathetic dystrophic just Dystrophy. Dystrophy. Patients will serve TBI. So w- patients with severe TBI. I can't read today. <laughs> I went I went for a six-mile run, and now my brain is just oh, kind of scrambled. Okay. Patients with severe TBI were found to have a 12% incidence of CRPS. Okay. Yeah. Let's see. I actually um, was on my... I was just wondering what they had to say about brain injury and um, complex pain syndrome. So I actually had did screenshots of some of my different um, because I started a second channel, which is more about my health and my personal stuff. Okay. So like advocating because a lot of stuff that has happened to me, it was always it's in your head. You know, you're you're exaggerating whatever, but no, that's not the case. It's not. Well, some of it's technically in my head, (laughs) (laughs) but you know, if I. Every time I see a new specialist, they're like, you advocate so well for yourself. You give such a great history. And I'm like, I have to. Right. You know, and yeah. there are people out there, like, I come from a medical background, so I know what I'm saying. Right. You know, and I'm like not, I hate saying it, I'm not an idiot. So what is their, what is their, um, what are their, their thoughts when you go in and you advocate for yourself? Do they, do they feel like you're just trying to get drugs or it's, what is It's hit or miss. Yeah. It really is. It can, some... Some are like, oh, no, you know, you don't know what you're talking about. Like, I'm the, you know, I'm the right. specialist and I know. And I'm like, that's great. You're the specialist in this field. I'm the specialist of my own body. Right. And I've literally said that before. I will walk into a new patient appointment. And this is, this is what I tell people all the time. You walk into a new patient appointment and it's so they can get to know you. I walk in and say, I am interviewing you to join my team of medical care providers because yeah, you're taking, you're seeing if you're going to take me on as a patient, right? But you also have to be able to work with my team. Yeah. Cause like my primary care physician recently retired, he got burned out. I get it. I went back to a nurse practitioner I used to see. And at first they were, they were like, no, she can't, you're too complicated. I was like, no, no, no. Tell her, you know, I just literally need her to play quarterback. <laughs> like, I will see her when I have a sinus infection or if I need a referral to somebody else. You know, that's that's what she's there for. And it's like, I am complicated. I mostly see specialists. But I'll, I do have to go see new ones every once in a while. And I will tell them that. Like, if you're not able to work with a team dealing with my health because it's very complicated, I, no. That's a No. I can't have a provider sitting there trying to tell me it's in my head when I know it's not. Yeah. You know? Yeah. It's, and I get told that a lot. <laughs> I mean, when they tell you that, what is the, like, what is oh. the solution to that? Like, what do they want you to do to fix it? Do they say, I mean, cause if there's, if it, if they say it's in your head, there's gotta be a way to fix it. Right. No. So how do you they get it out wanna, of your head? They don't want to deal with the, the complexity of it. And I'll tell them, like, I get it. If you, if if I'm too complex for you, good. We're good. I understand. But I'll also, more willing to respect you if you say, whoa, I don't know about this. Let me look into it, and then we can come back to Mm, it. Right. Perfect. 
Because yeah. I know you don't know everything. Because I know I they don't know everything. Yeah. I know we all went to school. Like, you know. <laughs> <it's>, <laughs> I know you can't possibly know absolutely everything. It's not possible. Right. But you have to kind of approach it as like a group think sometimes. Right, right. Because there's multiple yeah. things going on that are in mu- their multi-specialty and they all inter- interact with each other. And historically in the United States, healthcare has been each individual system is separate from the others. And we know that it's not. So what do you mean by that? So <laughs> like say you're diabetic. Well, that's just cause you don't eat well or you eat too much sugar, but no, that, you know, it's not necessarily that you're obese and you eat too much sugar. You know, for me, It's genetic. I was able to hold it off until my mid-30s. I did a really good job of it. It's still wildly out of control, but, you know, I can eat a peanut butter and jelly sandwich and my blood sugar bottoms out to 70. Oof. That makes no sense because jam is high in sugar. Right. You know, so it's not all this and that. It's not black and white. And it's because humans are complicated. We are extremely complicated, that's for sure. (laughs) (laughs) But, like, you know. Some of my diagnosis, um, you know, knee scopes. I had appendix gallbladder out. Uh, when I was 15 months old, I had a breast tumor removed and had Whoa. to have reconstructive surgery starting at 14. Wow. That made me very, very adult. I was making very adult decisions that women don't normally have to make until they're in their 50s and 60s, at, if at all. So I've been a fairly mature person. <laughs> <laughs> kind of had to be. So I had multiple surgeries for that. Um, oh my gosh, so many. I get, I've been diagnosed, like, with, okay, so the latest thing has been gastroenterology. That's been, like, the biggest nightmare for me, period. Um, I had to go back to a gastroenterologist, but I'm going to MSU, because I used to see the two main guys here in Lansing. Every time I would get an appointment with a different doctor, they'd order different tests, and then Tess would come back and they're like, okay, so no, no, it's not that, it's this. Um, okay. And then the next guy was like, oh, no, 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 it's not that diagnosis, it's this. And, like, I was having trouble swallowing again, and I, so I was like, oh, I need my esophagus ballooned. Went in Monday, right? I didn't need my esophagus ballooned at all. I was having trouble swallowing because my body is not moving the food through. So it was... Ten and a half hours later, and my food from the day before was still in my stomach. Wow. So. So what do they do to to help enhance the? They're, um, <clears throat> I, I have a connective tissue disorder that's genetic. It's called Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome. It's a collagen disorder. Unfortunately, the um, dysphagia and the diaph... I keep forgetting what the word is. Ugh. I should know because I just had to look it back up because I did a video about it that's uploading right now. Want me to look at it? Look it up? Uh, yeah. Gastroparesis. That's it. Okay. <sighs> that's how my brain works. It's so <laughs> frustrating. Mine does the same thing. Um, it's very common in people with EDS. And, like, my, I didn't talk to the doctor afterwards. I talked to her beforehand, and she was like, yeah, we're going to get to the bottom of this. And I saw her physician assistant and she was like okay we're just gonna literally scrap everything we're starting over from scratch i'm like sweet that works we think why it wasn't caught before was because they'd always do the upper and lower gi at the same time so for the lower part you have to take medication to empty out your system which will eventually pull everything out of your stomach too Mm -hmm. so that's why it wasn't necessarily seen but my husband was like is it because of the eds and she was like it's very likely wow which is something I've been trying to say for 10 years, like going through all this. I'm like, are we sure it's not this? Because I'm telling you, you know, like I'll get a migraine, don't eat that whole day. And I start throwing up and I'm throwing up food from the day before. They're like, no, 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 that's not possible. Were you there? <laughs> I'm like, like, this is literally, I'm just like. So uh, what, what did they do? What did they do when you told them that? About what? That it was, be, or when, when they figured out it was due to the EDS. So we don't know it's likely. It's very connected. We don't know. I have to have more testing done. Um, And they put me on this weird, like, low, oh, it's low fiber, but they called it something else. And I'm looking like this. I can't eat fruits and vegetables. 
I can't eat any whole wheat or whole grain. I can have as much enriched white bread as I want. I can have peas if they're cooked and peeled. <laughs> like what? Well, what can you eat? <laughs> Junk, basically. <laughs> oh, and chocolate. Apparently chocolate is high fiber. Oh, wow. Whatever. I ate me some chocolate brownies. <laughs> I don't even care. I was like, I'm doing it because... Uh, the next test isn't until middle of April. So, and they're like, oh, it's only going to be a week or two. And I'm all like, okay, I have a whole bunch of bananas that are going to go bad. <laughs> you know? It's like, well. That's got to be extremely frustrating to not be able to essentially live a normal life as far as yeah. being able to eat whatever you want and just have a normal, normal health. Yeah, it is. It, it gets very depressing. Yeah. It's a very isolating. Is there times of the year where it's worse? Oh, definitely in the winter. Yeah. but every, Is it because you you're less in, active? Or no, it's because like, there's no, no sun. It's <laughs> like everyone in Michigan gets seasonal affective disorder, basically, in yeah. the winter. I, you know, what's interesting about that is I used to get it really bad. Mm -hmm. But this this year, I have not got it at all. And I think it's I think it's because this is the first year I've ever, I've ever like during the wintertime, pushed having like a morning routine, getting up yeah. and working out, and yeah. then um, like journaling and goal setting. And yeah. doing those things every single day has helped me just kind of keep moving forward. And I feel good. Like, I feel energized. Yeah. Usually every winter I get so depressed. Yeah. I hate it. Like, I hate when I hated yeah. Michigan. I'm not from Michigan. I hate Michigan. Yeah, I, I was born in Oklahoma, but my dad's from Lansing. So we uh, moved up here when I was three. Wow. I'm from the Sunshine State. Mm. Yeah. So are you Florida man in Michigan? Yeah. Uh-oh. <laughs> no, no, no. Now, what have you done to deserve Florida man status? No, no, I don't know. <laughs> I don't even know what that means. <gasps> you don't know about Florida man? No, Florida what's Florida man? Oh, my Lord. You I just assumed not... that I was the man from Florida. No, <laughs> no. Some of the dumbest criminals on the face of the planet come from Florida, and they do absolutely oh, yeah. stupid stuff. That's because Florida's a wild place. <laughs> yeah, that's Florida man or Florida woman. Like, oh. literally... Crazy stuff. Like, I want to say there's one story. It was like a guy got arrested for feeding an alligator meth or something. What? <laughs> like, what? <laughs> yeah, it's like, wait, what? <laughs> oh yes. my gosh. Florida, that's Florida, man. <laughs> Florida is a crazy place. Have you ever been there? I have once. Okay. I went in February. So my friend was moving back down to Tampa and I was helping her pack to go, but she had a friend that was going to drive her car down that canceled and it happened to have snowed like six, six inches at night. I literally woke up and I go, I'm going to Florida. And I <laughs> like, so we get down there in 24 hours. I literally called my professor standing in the Gulf of Mexico going, I'm not going to be in class tonight. And he's like, why? I'm like, well, I'm kind of standing in the Gulf of Me Mexico. And he's like, ha ha funny. And I'm like, no, I'm serious. I'm literally in Florida right now. And he's just like, what? <laughs> and he was one of my bosses. So it actually just made it funnier. That is funny. I was like, I'll be back for work in two days, though. So we're all good. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, that's the only time I went to Florida. That's funny. I had, to, I had to pull over on the side of the highway trying to come back up because it was pouring so hard you couldn't see anything. Yeah. I was yeah. like, what the hell? That's interesting too with Florida when storms come through because it's such a narrow state mm -hmm. they just kind of come through and then they're gone. Yeah, they it's just so like nice. Blow right over. Yeah, sort of how Michigan is though. Too. Yeah, yeah. Not necessarily as crazy intense, but right, definitely. Extreme. Well, what we had snow and ice, and then yesterday it was what forty something. Yeah, it was like forty two degrees, yeah. and then today's supposed to be forty eight. Yeah, I don't know. It's like, what? I, I was driving home from Walmart, and I was trying to get out of Walmart before it hit. And I got to my car. My car wouldn't start again. And it was fixed. <laughs> and I'm like, you're kidding me. So I'm like on the phone with my husband. I'm like, oh, my God, my car's at him. And I'm like, it's coming in. And so he got like a tow truck. He's coming to get me. And I went inside, and I was like, fine. I was I literally like left without finishing chopping because I was like, oh, crap, it's snowing. So I was like, okay, I've got everything. I'm, I'll, I'm good for, for now. And then I went back in and finished what I was going to get. And I come back out and get in my car. And it started. What? I was like, what's that? So I'm, I called my husband. I'm like, uh, how far away are you? Because you're about to kill me. And he's like, <laughs> why? And I'm like, because my car just started. He's like, jeez. <laughs> so it, actually, it's a good thing, though, that he came home early. Because I was like, I need to put gas in the car. Because I'm like on E. 
right above E. And my dad always preached to me, you never let your tank go below half in yep. the wintertime <laughs> in Michigan because the water will freeze. <laughs> so the water vapor will freeze. And he was like, no, you're not going to stop. I'm like, no, I have to go to the gas station. Has anybody ever had that happen to him? Back in the day, yeah. Like yeah. in the 70s, but I don't think nowadays. No, I don't think so. I don't think so because it's sort of a closed system. <laughs> I don't know. I am not a car person. My husband is. I, but as far as I don't know, no, but it's still, it was pounded into my brain since I was five <laughs> that you do not let your ta- gas tank go below half yeah. in the winter in Michigan because your lines will freeze. <laughs> <laughs> my sister's the same, so I'm not the only one. But I'm um, sorry. I think I, oh, no, no you're good. A chair. Okay. I was not trying to play footsie. No, you're good. You're good. <laughs> um, but I got to the gas station. My husband had called his mom because we had a refill for the dog to pick up at the pharmacy. So she went and picked it up for us because we weren't going to make it in time. And so he was like, I'm going to stop by my mom's house and I'm going to get it. And his truck stopped. It oh died. My gosh. It was like, I guess it was like stalling out the whole way to the oh. home. But he had it happen last summer it got wet or something something's loose and water had gotten up in his truck from the rain uh, and it stalled so we actually went and picked it up yesterday and it was it started right up so of course of course <laughs> so yeah no we have old cars and we're so poor. it's i was gonna say so it's safe to say you don't have good luck with vehicles i don't have good luck with technology period <laughs> are you kidding me i had my ipad like a week and a half and it wouldn't turn back on i was like what the <laughs> Oh, oh, it was operator funny. error because I didn't do the combination right for a four start. Uh, <laughs> so the buttons were different. They what, confused one thing me. I wanted to get to real yes. quick on the podcast was that I believe it was you. You were talking about starting a, or creating a documentary. Yes. Okay. Tell me so about this. This is where I was going with when we talked about like what was the worst case child abuse. When I was a kid, we went and saw a pediatric dentist, which in the 80s. Didn't exactly exist. Um, he's a bad guy. I remember literally sitting in the chair with the little gas mask on, and it would get turned up so high. And when you get nitrous oxide, if it's too much, you get too deep, it starts getting real tinny. But it like so here, there would be songs like I have vivid memory memories of that, and I like start to freak out. And he would come and like just clamp his hand on your shoulder and dig telling you to calm down. I, I don't like talking about it because I'm talking with other survivors. I can tell you this. Our stories are literally almost identical. We all thought we were the only ones and we're not. There's so many of us, but is this Dennis still, was he practicing recently? Um, so he was convicted of CSC um, of a kid. I think he said I can Ryan Lewis. It's public knowledge. He had um, went to the police right before statute of limitations. And so he was arrested for that. And he was convicted. I think it was 15 counts of CSC. 15? I think so. Whew. And multiple counts, counts of child abuse, because he didn't necessarily diddle every patient, but he definitely tortured us. Did you say diddle? I did. <laughs> <laughs> I have to be YouTube friendly, okay? I'm I'm learning some words that are hilarious that I can use that also help break the seriousness of the topic. Um, <clears throat> His name was Ryan Lewis? Mm-hmm. The dentist was Wendell Reset. Who? Wendell Reset. That was w- the name of the dentist? W-E-N-D-E-L-L. Hold on. W- E-N-D-E-L-L. Last name R-A-C-E-T-T-E. And it's pronounced Reset. There's literally like two articles about him now. From Mount Pleasant? Originally Lansing. He was also in Mount Pleasant. Mm. After. he was So he was convicted. <clears throat> In prison, he appealed the conviction. Yeah. Gets. They were tossed. He, he won his appeal for that because there was, quote unquote, impropriety in the, the prosecuting attorney's office, which is Ingham County. <clears throat> and then Stuart Dunnings gave him a sweetheart deal. No contest, one count of child abuse, no registered sex offender, no more jail. What? Yeah. When was this? 
that was 2016. Okay, yep. He literally, uh, I found out, took the plea deal on my birthday. Wow. Yeah, that makes me mad. Wow. Sorry. You're fine. I'm gonna read. I'm gonna read this real quick. Yeah. Says although he didn't, although mm. he said he did it reluctantly, an Ingham County judge honored a plea agreement between prosecutors and a former Lansing pediatric dentist whose convictions for raping a boy younger than 10 had been thrown out. Mm-hmm. The plea agreement called for Wendell Rackett, Reset. Reset, 69, to be sentenced to 1,246 days, a little more than a, than three years and three months, after he pleaded no contest to a single count of first-degree child abuse. The 15 counts of criminal sexual conduct were dismissed. Holy shit. Mm-hmm. The sentence matched... What he had already served after being convicted in 2012 of sexually assaulting Ryan Lewis, a patient when he was between the ages of five and 10. The alleged sexual assaults, which Lewis said started in 1996, weren't reported to police until 2010. You know, what's crazy is that they're like, so my wife went to this dentist and I think he, there's many of them out there. Yeah. That's what scares me more than anything. There are issues with this case that I have, why he was able to get away with so much. Because he started in the 70s, and he yeah. didn't, didn't lose his license until 2010-ish. That's crazy. But after his appeal, he was able to get his license back. What? Who, who and the Department of Licensing for Michigan gave him back his yeah. license to practice dentistry on children. It was, rem- wow. it was revoked like three months later. That makes me mad. That's one of the answers I wow. want. Why was he allowed to go and practice on children again? Like, who thought that was a good idea? I want to know why Stuart Dunnings gave him this plea deal. But we all know what happened with Stuart Dunnings, too. And I'm not like a cons- conspiracy theorist. What happened with him? Oh, he pled guilty to, hu- to uh, human sex trafficking. Oof. And I knew him. And I was like, I did not believe it. He's the prosecutor, prosecuting attorney? Yeah, he was at the time. Birmingham County. That's why Gretchen Whitmer was the, took over as prosecuting attorney before she became governor. Mm. Was that. (sighs) So what was that situation? So there had been rumors for years and years and years that there was something going on. But that happens a lot in law enforcement. Yeah. Like there's all, there's all this corruption and it. Don't get me wrong, it's out there. I never would have believed it with him because I liked him. You know, he was a good guy, I thought. Yeah. And he pled guilty to it. I think I remember this. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I think I remember this he's case. He's the one that gave Reset his plea deal. Why? Why? I don't know. Well, what did he plead guilty to? What's being hidden? And I'm not a conspiracy theorist, but there is something that is there. Reset was a very, very popular dentist. He did. He was in Lansing. He did dental work for governor's kids and lawmakers' kids. Mm. So he had money. What was happening? Because he he was convicted for um, insurance fraud with Medicare and stuff. Delta Dental never went after him, which I thought was kind of odd. Probably had to do with the fact that he had money. Wow. This is the guy that they found. <clears throat> I'm trying to think. What was that guy's name? The Wendell prosecutor? Roos- oh, Stuart Dunnings the third. Yeah, I want to pull him up too, because I, I vaguely crazy. remember this and I'm trying to I'm trying to think about it. Like trying to remember. Yeah. I literally cried. <laughs> Cause I was like You knew him? Yeah. Cause I yeah, I did I worked I was a domestic violence investigator advocate, whatever, with Ingham County. So I worked with them. Like, I talked with them people because I would look at the cases. I'd go with the victims. Oh, yeah. I remember this guy. Yeah. So that that was like. <sighs> and he only served a year in jail. That was his plea deal, yeah. Wow. Yeah. How many counts did, how many counts did uh, he have? I don't know. I'm not sure what he was officially charged with. So this was, I think, 2013. Let's see here. Former Ingham County prosecuting attorney Stuart Dunnings the third will report to Ingham County Jail by 6 p.m. Friday to begin his sentence for three years probation with the first year served in jail, a judge ordered Tuesday. Genesee County Court Judge Joseph Farhar. 
yeah. uh, presiding over sentencing because Ingham County judges rescued, re- recused themselves, mm-hmm. sentenced Dunning's 64 in a courtroom on the third floor of veterans. Okay, whatever. That came into Lansing, basically. Right. Uh, he was arrested March 14th outside a coffee shop. Yeah, that's what I remember. Okay. Mm-hmm. Outside of coffee shop um, in Lansing and pleaded guilty on August 2nd to misconduct in office and a misdemeanor charge of engaging in services of a pro- prostitute. Mm-hmm. He had been facing 15 prosecution related charges. Prostitution related. Or prostitution, <laughs> sorry. It's really small on my screen. I know. There we go. Including a 20 year felony spread over three counties. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So I wonder what he got. Uh, I don't really want to read through this whole thing. Yeah. But. Yeah. Wow. So, so he was the one that prosecuted. That's crazy. Well, he was not the the assistant prosecuting attorney that did it. Um, her name is Deb, and she was the one that actually did it. But everything has to go through Stuart Dunnings. This is a huge case. Wow. So, um, oddly enough, I found Deb went into private practice. I don't know how long after this case but her private practice is representing kids that have been molested and all that other stuff so she still does that which wow. i think is amazing yeah because they're tough cases but she's taking it on yeah. i've reached out to her um haven't heard back i would like if for my documentary i'd love to talk about the case with her or whatever don't know if she can but if anything for the resources like right i i need what where are good places that people can go if this has happened to them right you know right. like where am i going to get reliable statistics because we all know now anybody can put any number on the internet and yeah. make it appear legitimate right so how many so how many victims have you talked to um i think i'm at like 35 but Holy it's not cow. just patients and it's not necessarily every single sibling in a family um but i've talked to parents whose children do not even want to discuss it. I've talked to former staff that have been involved. Involved how? In court. Mm. So I don't want to like throw people under the bus, but there's been staff that have come forward. You know, were they protecting him? No, no, they're just scared for their own safety and well-being. Right. I mean, he's out. He still lives in Lansing. He still lives here. I should have him on the podcast. <laughs> Let me grill I him. I don't <laughs> recommend that because no. there are, yeah, that would not. No, I don't want him to know where I live. No, you know, you have kids. <laughs> <laughs> I also don't want other people to find him, basically. Right. Yeah, no. He's I mean, a bad guy. He is a bad guy. But, That's not. Yeah, like, I mean, I remember I my sister would go back and she'd be crying and so I'd be trying to fight and there was a separate side room that we would get locked, tied down and locked in. No one was, we we're on nitrous gas. And he would walk away and leave us there for hours. What? Forever. And every appointment was, there was new concerns. Like literally we had like a standing appointment every month. I had crowns on all of my molars. He did what he had called preventative dentistries. Oh, I can see there's going to be a cavity that's going to form there. So we need to eliminate it. Wow. But he wouldn't fill it completely, so then a cavity would develop. And you'd have to go back. And we had to go back, yeah. So, I mean, I had a root canal as a teenager without anything. No light, no Novocaine, nothing. I white-knuckled it the whole time because I was so terrified of being numbed, like, wow. all of it. Because, like, he would jam the needles in. He would give you barely a little bit of it. By, by the time he came back to do it, it was all worn off. Um. There was, I think it was a, the, one of the judges said that he was the worst sadist he's ever seen. He was a sadist. He enjoyed inflicting pain on us. Oh, my God. And he would threaten to kill our siblings or our families if we said anything. So we were all threatened to keep our mouths shut. And when you're a kid, you know, I was six, seven, eight. Is this practice still open? No. 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 One thing, it was up by Frandor. And the funny thing is everyone I've talked to, when they're on Saginaw at Frandor, if they don't turn to get down, you know, onto whatever to get down to 496, they start to freak out because you're going to have to go right past this practice. Where was this practice at? So it was right there on Saginaw heading west by like the armory. No, 
I can picture it. It's on, I think it was on the right-hand side of the road, so the north side. It's a building. I've been in that building once, and I freaked out, and I didn't know why because I didn't remember it. Now I know. Oh, wait, that was why I freaked out. Because, yeah, like, every single one of us, it's because I talk, you know, I'm like, hey, I'm not going to put your information out there. I just want to make sure, like, we all have our voices heard. Yeah. And it, not just Ryan. And I've talked with, like, Ryan. I actually talked to him quite a bit. Uh, he, he and I have become friends. But, you know, he doesn't want to be the main focus. Right. But it's also in the same aspect. He never got true justice. None of us did. So when you are going to do this documentary, how are you going to film it? Are you just, is it going to be interviews? What is it? <laughs> I don't know. I am not a documentary filmmaker. So how do you I just plan watch on... a lot of documentaries? <laughs> <laughs> so how do you plan on making it? Um, well, like I bought a camera. It's like a cheap little stupid camera. I don't know what the quality is even because I can't even get the stupid video off my card. <laughs> I am not a technology person. <laughs> um, I've had a couple production companies reach out to me, but nothing really has gone through because. The thing, the bottom line is we are, it's it's not me, it's we. Right. We are in control of this. It's our story. It's our voices. Right. And I'm not going to allow someone to be. In control of it. Yeah. They're not going to take advantage of what we went through. Right. And I don't want anyone to misrepresent anything, take anything out of context. Right. Um. Because, I mean, the I've gotten emails from people and they're like, I've never talked to anybody about this before. Like, nobody knows this. And so, like, when I first talked to everyone, that's what I'm like. I just, I asked them, I said, you know, I just want to let you know, you know, I do record the calls, like, but I record myself so you can hear their voice just because I have a really bad memory and I'm going to forget. <laughs> I literally called one lady. I was like, oh, I have to call her. And she was like, uh are you sure you're calling the right person? I'm like, yeah. She's like, we talked yesterday. I was like, (laughs) so do you know, so you know why I said I record? I was like, this is exactly why. So I do have a bad memory. Um, But I let, I want to hear what they have to say first, because I don't ever want to be accused of like, oh, you're putting someone else's story on someone else. It's not. Right. It's literally verbatim. Every single one of us can describe the exact layout of his office from the 70s until the 2010s. Wow. Because it was the same. Like, everything he did was, like, systematic. It was, he did it with everyone. Wow. Um, Gosh. But, yeah, I don't want another person to have that control over that story because I don't want it to be ex- exploitative. Right. Um. And I, I've told everyone, like, up until the time that we put the film out or the documentary out, if you want to change your participation, you can. Because I don't want someone to feel like they were forced yeah, into participating in some way. So it's whether they don't want their story told just to be included in, like, the fact that we've talked to so many people, you know, and there are so many others that didn't want to actually be listed or talked you know, public. Right. You yeah. Know. I mean, because there's like a, a shame that comes with it too. And mm-hmm. then now that's going to be attached to them forever. Yeah. And yeah. The, how this all started was I have complex PTSD. I had to go to the dentist. I hate the dentist. I know why I hate the dentist. I have my AirPods. I normally put them in. I listen to music. And now, like, my dentist is amazing. It's all female staff, except for her husband, but he works uh, at the reception desk. And If there's, like, a female in the practice, like, he does not help. He won't even go to the bathroom while they're there. So it's just females in back, which is really amazing. They're very trauma-informed. I love it. Um, But I couldn't find my AirPods one day, and then the ones that plugged into my phone were in my desk drawer at work. So I was having to hear all of it as it was going on, and I got triggered really badly. And, like, I went to work. I ended up – I. We're still not sure if I actually quit that day or not. But I, I, like, had my husband help me pack everything up, put it in my car, and I went home. And, like, I mean, I was totally triggered. And it was because someone came up behind me and stuck their, their arm around me. I lost oh. it. And, you know, like, I posted about it on Facebook. And I was like, 
I know I've talked about this a little bit, but this just happened. Like, this is, this is bad. You know, like, I know I have my dental health sucks because of this. I didn't go to the dentist. I was terrified. I had, I had a freaking root canal white knuckling it. I mean, that's pretty. That's intense. Yeah. At 15 or whatever it was you, you yeah, said. Yeah, it was in high school. So that's crazy. I don't remember when in high school, but it was high school. So, yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. That's, that's how bad, like, I was terrified. And I, you know, the, at the appointment I had the, the nitrous, but I could, that the sound of the music being a little bit tinny started getting to me. Um, and I've definitely been in the chair where there was, I don't know what song it was, but it was, it sounded exactly like some other song that would always play when I was in the chair. And mm. it like did that say like that echo. Oh, and not this last time, time before um, we were doing the prep work for my crown that I just got and. I literally was like, ooh, stop, stop, stop. I sat up because I could smell. She was, like, doing some of the grinding or whatever, and there was a smell that triggered it. Like, they had to sit me up. I'm like, I was crying, and I was like, oh, my God. I'm like, ooh. It was, it was bad. That's crazy. Yeah. That is so crazy. That one individual can change the tra- <laughs> trajectory of so many people's lives. Yeah. And But I made the post, and I was like, this is the dentist I went to, and I, like, Posted screenshots. These are the articles about them. Like, I'm not making this up. Like, this really happened. And there are so many people that I went to school with. We all saw him. Nobody knew that we all saw him. Wow. Then there's people I've met as wow. adults that have seen him. And my primary care, one of the nurse practitioners, she was like, my husband was a patient at his. He won't go to the dentist. It's like. So, so it's, he was doing things to. Everyone. 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 It wasn't necessarily as sexual with girls that I have found out. It was more sexual with men Mm -hmm. or boys? Boys, yeah. I've heard some with girls, but I have not. But then again, I've only talked to some 35 people. Was he married or anything? Yeah, had kids. Wow. Yeah. Have you talked to them? No. Will you? Not unless they reach out to me. I will not reach out to anybody. I have my information. Um... You know, like I've made posts about it on Facebook, and you've probably seen one of those posts. Yeah, probably. Like, yeah. I have a bad memory, too. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we're doing great together. <laughs> so um, I make the post, and I'm like, share the post. If you know someone, have them reach out to me. I will not contact someone because I am not going to put someone in that position to be further traumatized if they are not in a spot to handle it. Mm-hmm. And but they might not know about it. Well, they know, yeah, unless they have bad memories. I mean. No, no, what I mean is like, so like, for instance, his kids, they might not know that you're doing a documentary on it, but they I might have something to say. I don't know if they do. I have been contacted by people that know them, and I'm like, give them my information, but I will not reach out to them because I don't want to. My My concern is someone doing something to themselves that is mm. regrettable. Right. I yeah. don't want to be responsible for that. That I would I would really, really struggle with that. So one of the things I've worked on is getting like names and sort of referrals for mental health folks for everyone. Like that's that's like one of the first things is like I need to make sure I have some therapists on hand. On <laughs> hand. Like because <laughs> This is going into stuff, and I've been, you know, I've been in therapy, like, essentially my entire life. So I am definitely at a way better place to handle this than most people. Yeah. My little sister, she can't talk about it. I asked her, and she goes, I have two little boys that have to go to the dentist. I can't. I'm like, okay. Fair enough. I'm not going to push her. I mean, I guess it's... (laughs) It's a good thing that practices are so much better now. I mean, there's standards around it. No, you don't think so? No. Really? Do you know how many I have gotten messages and comments from people? When was this? When did this happen? Where was it? Jackson, Ann Arbor, other dentists and specialists in Lansing. I mean, if you look at it, who are we overlapping as an actual physician in this area alone? What do you mean? Larry Nasser. Mm, right. I mean, if it's. That, you, you think you think they're all entangled with each other? I I don't honestly don't know. I don't I probably at some at some level. 
that honestly. that whole story in, is super interesting, Larry Nasser, because like I refuse to see him, and now I know why he made my he just gave me a bad feeling, so I wouldn't see him when my um, sports med doc was out with the I think he was out with a team for a tournament or something. So I I was like, no, I can wait till he comes back. <laughs> I was like, I just don't. Want, he gave me the creeps, and I I met him. Like, I was a student athletic trainer in high school, and I went to Holt because they had, like, hockey and lacrosse. And I was like, well, this is, if I want to be an athletic trainer, I want to get to know some of the other sports other than football and baseball and soccer. Right. So, like, I actually went, worked with him and met him, and I was just kind of like, Whoa. I was like, he's just weird, you know? But I, well, that would explain it. <laughs> yeah, now we know why. And I know people that have had really bad interactions with him. I know people that he's hurt. Mm -hmm. And it's like. I had a judge on who uh, had to like do the initial like. I, I can't remember like the when arraignment. he. The arraignment. The arraignment. Yeah. She was like it was weird. I like Judge Aquilina. Yeah. I do like her. Yeah. Yeah. She's a really good judge. She's a really good person. I like her. <laughs> when she when I watched the news story of her like I was like yes. I was like literally like standing up and cheering. I was like <laughs> Yes. <laughs> It was like it was vindication for people that have been abused yeah. by someone like that. Yeah. Um, but the real crazy thing is the attorney that represented Nasser was also Reset's attorney. She's also um, representing Ethan Crumbly's parents in Oxford. Really? Yeah. And she claims to be a feminist. Hmm. I don't know. Protecting those two people, and you're going to sit there and say you're a feminist? Yeah, I mean, how could you protect Larry Nassar and say you're a feminist? I don't know. I don't like her. I've never met her, but I don't like her. I don't ever Do you think it's like a, like a status thing? Probably. Like, yeah. oh, I'm a good person. Mm -hmm. And I, I get it. They're, they are allowed representation, but when you hit every single one, you're doing the, those two, and then <laughs> I start to question you. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I don't know how anybody could get behind Larry Nassar. Get paid to do a job, I guess. I yeah. Mean, they're allowed representation. Yeah. I mean, you are, but you would think at some point your moral your moral side would take take hold. You think? At least but for then me. Again, That's why I'm not. Yeah. But then again, <laughs> we have people like Larry Nassar and Wendell Reset. And this is, you know, they're out there. Right. So. Yeah. Well, Crazy. Jessica, I think we should wrap this up. We're uh, an hour and 12 minutes into this. Oh, yeah. I talk for hours. So Time we'll flies. Yeah, and I can talk forever. <laughs> I don't know. Did we get enough stuff? Yeah. So we covered your channel. We yes. covered um, your health a little bit and like why you kind of, how you kind of got into it. And then um, we talked about the documentary, yeah. which is the ultimate reason why I reached out to you because I'm like, that sounds interesting. I want to yeah. I want to talk to you. Um. And I don't remember somebody telling me or tagging, tagging me or yeah. tagging you. I don't. Yeah. But. Yeah. I was like, <laughs> I was like, oh, I think that's the guy that, that she tagged me in. And I was, it was, it was you. I went back and looked. That's cool. It still amazes me that nobody in Lansing does this. Like nobody like interviews people. I like, know. It, it's weird. There's just, I mean, there's creators like this in Michigan, but there's not. Right. It's definitely more popular in other states. It is. I don't I don't know why. As I say, Michigan is a nation unto itself and we kind of <laughs> operate by our own policies here. It's, we really do. Yeah. Yeah. Friend of mine but, says it's it's South Canada. <laughs> That's what he calls it. Hmm. <laughs> not as nice though. We're not as nice as Canadians. Eh. True, for the most part. <laughs> just, just don't cross us. we will be all right. There we go. That's the rule. <laughs> that is the rule. All right, Jessica, thanks for doing this. Yes. This was fun. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. And right. uh, we'll have you back, and hopefully that documentary takes gets some legs and, and sprouts. Yeah, and the biggest thing right now is funding, um, and I didn't even want to talk about it, but I did the Freedom of Information request. Okay. 600 and some odd dollars. Oh, my gosh. Yes, just for the time that it took for them to gather all the information wow. under that. And I don't even get to see it, so I don't even know how much is there. Oh, my gosh. But I'm on disability. I don't have $600. I was not <clears throat> expecting something like that. <clears throat> that is oh, crazy. Yeah, so we've talked about maybe doing a fundraiser, but I, that's not my wheelhouse. I don't know. Right. Yeah, I mean, when you get pe when you start accepting money from people and it, yeah. it becomes like, eh. 
it's kind of. Yeah, I, I get it. It's like, I don't, I'm not doing it for money. If it, I mean, if it goes wide, good. I want people to know that they're not, not alone. Right. That's my biggest thing is right. I thought I was alone. Everyone I've talked to, we've all thought that we were alone. We're not alone. It happens. And like, I know parents feel incredible guilt because of it. And they shouldn't because they didn't know. Right. So, like, that's the point is letting everyone know, hey, you're not alone. It does happen. You know, you are not the only one that went through this with him. Well, and then also by sharing the stories, I mean, I mean, because clearly you said that this is still going on. Yeah. It would kind of put out there like, oh, maybe these are the warning signs. These are the things you should pay attention to when you're sending your kids to the dentist. Yeah. Yeah, if if you're not if you're not allowed to go into the back exam area with your child at the dentist, yeah, that's a problem. Go away. You need to find a new one. I don't yeah. care how good they they're supposed to be. Don't do it. Right. <laughs> and there's a problem there. Exactly. So that's like the bottom line of it. But unfortunately, I'm also constricted, like trying to get stuff that the county doesn't want out there, which is why I think they're putting such a high price tag on it. Well, hopefully somebody will come forward and pay for it. <laughs> Santa Claus. <laughs> All, right. All right. So, All right. yes. All right. Thanks for doing this, Jessica. It was fun. Yeah, and uh, I great. look forward to doing it again. All right. We'll talk to you soonish. All right. Okay.